Hi, this is Shadi and before I start today's video, I just want to announce to all of you that the Kodokan has now its own YouTube channel. It's called Kodokan, it's all in caps and someone sent it to me and informed me and uh, they have a lot of high quality videos and high production value and just overall great content. Uh, I urge you all to go and subscribe if you are a judoka or BJJ or whatever you happen to practice and you're interested. Uh, I would urge you all to go and subscribe. And also, this is my 150th upload. Uh, I'm not sure if this includes my old college footage that I used, like animation type footage. Uh, that are now gone from this channel but YouTube notified me that I'm close to 150 and uh, still regardless 150 strong videos on YouTube is great thank you all uh, for your interactions your suggestions um, and just overall being a very highly intellectual audience uh, I am very thankful again and appreciative of you uh, Today's video is about Taro Miyake, a Jujutsu master. Um, I've used this footage you see here in front of you uh, countless times. And the man playing the Uke is actually Taro Miyake himself. This is a demonstration done, I believe, in either 1911 or 1912. I'm not sure. Uh, it was done alongside Tobari. And uh, uh, Taro Miyake had a very illustrious career both teaching and also competing uh, he is very similar to a lot of the masters i discussed on this channel like yukio tani uh, matei montanabe uh, and uh, mitsuyo maeda they all have this uh, wonderful soul to go out and compete and show themselves and do these demonstrations and also being great teachers themselves so Taro Miyake uh, was actually born as Taruji Miyake uh, in Okayama, Japan in 1881 uh, and he was the student of Matei Montanabe, a man that we have discussed multiple times of, on this channel from the Fosen Ryu school and also he learned under yet the Judo and Jiu Jitsu master Yataro Handa in Osaka. And in 1899, when he was just uh, 17 years old, he started working as a sensei or a teacher in Nara. And then just two years later, at the age of 19, he became a police instructor for hand-to-hand -hand combat in the city of Kobe. However, being so young and reckless, he would often uh, have like a hot temper and starting fights. It all climaxed in 1904 when he took part in a brawl and he was eventually fired and there he started to uh, he started his journey to the west for all these demonstrations and these prize fighting matches similar to all the others so his first destination was London uh, he toured and did demonstrations in the music halls and there there was an undefeated man by the name of Yukio Tani which I'm sure uh, you've all heard of and I did cover on this channel and he beat him he uh, ended his record and together they co-wrote a book called the game of Jiu Jitsu uh, I used it as uh, part of the thumbnail in my Yukio Tani video and I was trying to find it online and on Amazon but couldn't however someone was very kind from my audience to link it to me and told me that the copyright has been gone for decades and I will link it as a PDF uh, in the description you can go and check it out it has like these illustrations uh, the gi how to grab it uh, very basic stuff like deashi harai uh, ogoshi armbar guard pulling uh, pins and the stuff that are very basic but they will take you a very long way uh, they are all demonstrated in this 1906 book so more than a hundred years ago uh, it's a very cool book I will link it down below for you guys to check it out so um, he taught and uh, mingled with very high society people uh, like Albert D. Belroc or Bel Roche um, so after London they started going into Europe he went with uh, 
Sadakazu and Maeda, they all went and toured Europe together and challenged people. Uh, there's a story that he even uh, challenged the great Gamma, but uh, if he did and did participate against him, we know that he lost because the great Gamma, the Pakistani, the originally Pakistani wrestler, uh, remained undefeated throughout his whole career. So in 1914, he went to the United States and stayed there for approximately 20 years uh, in, in the state of Seattle uh, where he started his own school and uh, in 1917 he went against the very famous catch wrestler Ad Santel. If you don't know Ad Santel beat uh, Kodokan Judokas uh, until he eventually lost to one of them and he did, proclaimed himself as a judo world champion so basically just making fun of the Kodokan until uh, they sent someone to beat him. Uh, so it was kind of like a struck ego of the Kodokan. And now we can see that he also beat uh, the Jujutsu master Taro Miyake. So he did cause a lot of trouble for the Japanese. Uh, he put him in a half Nelson and slammed him, basically TKOing him. He remained dizzy for like an hour and he suffered a mild concussion. So. It wasn't an easy loss for Taro Miyake. Uh, At Santel also uh, rivaled Frank Gotch. Uh, if you are a wrestling fanatic, you would know who they are. Uh, so At Santel was a very big and prominent figure in the wrestling history. So uh, this is where he became very interested in professional wrestling and the gimmicks and this whole fake personas. Uh, so he started working with Ed Lewis and in his wrestling promotion and he started to learn all the secrets of having you know wrestling names and how to do promos uh, etc so in 1928 he decided to go back to Japan in order to make uh, professional wrestling very famous however he did not uh, he wasn't very successful but which is kind of ironic because now in today's age professional wrestling is very very hot and very popular in japan uh, however he wasn't very successful in making it very known uh, so he was eventually uh, how do you say forced to go back to the state and work and train under oki shikina which is a danzan ryu jujutsu master uh, one of the latest uh, koryu to be founded uh, in the west actually not in japan and it was in Hawaii, I believe, because a lot of Japanese uh, traveled to uh, Hawaii and even till this day you have a lot of people from Japanese origins and there that Koryu was started. So it's nice to know these things. Um, he remained a competitor up until his 50s, till 1932, uh, which is very admirable. He passed away th just three years later in 1935. Um, I believe that all the concussions and the matches played a role in his death, unfortunately. Uh, so he had approximately 15 matches. Uh, this is the official record. He had five wins and 10 uh, losses. So he was somewhat successful, which brings me to another point that I want to discuss. Uh, Mitsuyo Maeda had also a, a somewhat successful competitive career in the West against wrestlers. He wasn't a wrestler himself. I don't know why people call him that he was also a wrestler, which is uh, not true at all. Uh, I'm gonna do a video about uh, like the folklore in uh, everything that has to do with the America, the Gracies, etc. Not just uh, the folklore in Japan, like the Totsuka Kodokan rivalry. So there's a lot of uh, hearsay and uh, un, like how do you say uh, unchecked facts uh, they are based on memoirs and stories not on official records like the Totsuka Kodokan rivalry which lasted from 1885 till 1888 I'm gonna do the same but for the West version uh, regarding Maeda and the others so again thank you all for this uh, long 
it's been almost a year since I've been uploading. It's gonna be on June 1st, uh, the first year anniversary of this uh, martial arts channel. And also, uh, do not forget to go and subscribe to the Kodokan channel. And I will link the Game of Jiu Jitsu uh, book in the description below for you to check it out. It's a very cool book. Uh, again, thank you all for listening and suggesting and just being a very cool audience. Thank you all. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.